Track the halls with bells of Klingons. Fa la 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 la. We've got a new Star Trek book just in time for the holidays. Fa la 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 la. I don't know what to do with the re 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 rest of the song. So that's what I'll end this song on. Fa la 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 la. Read Star Trek books. Hello interweb! <laughs> Sorry for that weird, weird intro. I didn't know what else to do for this one. Um, but just in time for the holidays, we have a brand new Star Trek novel, Star Trek Harm's Way by David Mack. And as you all know, I love Star Trek books. I love reading Star Trek books. So this was a great Christmas treat for me and I am excited to talk about it with all of you. And this book is actually a very extra special treat when it comes to Star Trek novels because this book is actually a continuation of a Star Trek series of novels that came out years and years ago and actually ended a long time ago called Star Trek Vanguard. If you never read the Star Trek Vanguard novels, they are a line of novels well worth reading and checking out. They came out, I think back when I was in high school they were coming out, um, so it's been a little bit of a bit of a little bit of a time, but they were a series of books that were trying to tell a serialized star story in Star Trek in novel form before even Star Trek Discovery was doing it. It kind of had like a darker edge, it was kind of very Battlestar Galactica sort of uh, kind of vibe to it, uh, but it was a really interesting and fascinating series centered on this uh, space station Vanguard that was set during the original series era. And it, again, I cannot recommend it highly enough. And David Mack actually wrote the uh, first book of it and several of the books in the series, I believe. Uh, but it was one that uh, ended uh, like quite a few years ago, as I said, um, which is understandable because, you know, the longer serialized stories, especially with tie-in novels go on, uh, probably the less good the sales do. Um, especially with tie-in fiction, a lot of people come to tie-in fiction expecting the same thing over and over again, like new, like basically just episodes of a TV show in book form, which I certainly appreciate, but I love Star Trek novels most specifically when they do get weird and strange and do and try new things, and I loved Vanguard for it. Um, so I was super excited when I heard that this novel was going to be kind of a side quill to the Vanguard series, that they were going to be able to resurrect it a little bit and tell a little bit more stories with some of the characters in Vanguard, while also kind of making it a pseudo Star Trek the original series novel and that's what we are given here in harm's way but let me put this right up front if you have not read any of Star Trek Vanguard that is totally okay this book gives you everything that you need to know about the series and if you've never read a single book don't know any of the characters this is actually a great way to get introduced a little bit into that world and see if it might pique your interest without having to like fully invest in like the first novel in the series or um, sort of you know all the other books that go on in that series if you just want to like an adventure with Kirk and friends and then maybe you'll get interested in these other characters this is it this is a perfect uh, way to, to do that for you. And I think David Mack actually threaded that needle uh, in a really uh, clever way uh, by sort of getting people to say like, hey, maybe you should go check out those other Vanguard books, but you don't need it here. Um, and I hope that that signals that um, the Star Trek book line, um, uh, I believe Simon & Schuster, uh, Random House, whatever whatever uh, publishing line owns the books, uh, might actually go back and like do audiobooks or reprints of those books uh, because that would be very exciting. I know they're planning on doing an audiobook version of um, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, A Stitch in Time with Andrew Robinson uh, early next year, which I am so pumped for, because uh, that is a book that is really popular and very hard to get and very expensive if because it hasn't been reprinted in a while. Um, so I'm hoping that this book is a kind of a sign that they might be going back and redoing some of those old novels um, and giving them some greater attention in a modern day with new uh, printings or, if, bless my heart, please, uh, audiobooks, because I adore audiobook versions. Uh, so very excited for that. But let's actually get into uh, what this novel itself is. Is. This novel is itself kind of set during the Klingon Cold War. If any of you remember, there was a Klingon Civil or Klingon War in Star Trek Discovery, and then we got the um, Organian Peace Treaty that we saw in Star Trek: The Original Series, where the Klingons and humans kind of had to be at odds with each other, but uh, they couldn't directly attack each other because then the Organians would kill them all. And so that leaves the Klingons and humans in sort of this an antagonistic state, but one where they can't heat it up for fear of anything else. So we are stuck in this situation where Captain Kirk is sent after a scientist that has gone missing in the neutral zone between the Klingon and uh, Federation border and has to try to not come into conflict with the Klingons. And this scientist may may, may not have something to do with the Vanguard station. And we are joined by some of our characters from Vanguard who are also searching for him. And it kind of puts them at heads and at odds with each other uh, while also trying to like, one, Kirk wants to save this guy, but doesn't really know what's going on because it's a secret mission. And so there's some like sort of tension there. But then on top of that, we have a Klingon ship run by the uh, very famous uh, Captain 
Captain Kang uh, from starts the original series as well, who is uh, trying to hunt down Kirk and capture the scientist uh, before Kirk does. But also, even though he's a Klingon warrior and wants to fight, can also not heat up the war either. So it's this great like battle of wills where these uh, two captains have restraints on each other and yet kind of have to battle each other as well. And what I love this novel uh, and what it does is it actually sort of highlights the two differences of the Federation crews and the Klingons crews. And we sort of get to journey with both of them and see how they are different and also very much the same. Like there's a lot of like interactions with like away teams with the Klingons and the Federation crew where we sort of mirror them against each other and we kind of see like they have very similar dynamics and how ultimately they are very similar people. I think that that was really clever. Um, and then there's some great sort of like Cold War uh, shenanigans. If you love uh, like Balance of Terror or uh, the recent episode of Star Trek Strange New Worlds uh, where it was like a, a Pike against the Gorn and so that and Star Trek Wrath of Khan as well, like the nautical um, Cold War-esque uh, submarine starship style uh, battles between ships. You will definitely get some fun of that here because that is here in spades and it's, it's it's a lot of fun just seeing how they try to tactic each other um, within space. It's just, it's it's really, if, if you're into that genre of fiction, this is a, a lot of fun uh, for that. Also, David Mack made a smart move and set this book right after the events of the Doomsday Machine, where Captain Kirk had to watch his friend and compatriot, uh, Captain Decker, die uh, by sending himself into the maw of the Doomsday Machine to try to stop it after he had gone mad because all of his crew had been killed by this machine through no fault of his own. And so this book actually kind of deals with the emotional aftermath of that for Kirk and how he sort of is questioning his own captaincy after seeing what happened to Captain Decker after the horrors of that episode. So it's actually really nice to see a little bit of fallout from such a monumental episode in novel form because the original series never would do that sort of emotional weight and fallout and trauma uh, that we now see in shows like Discovery or Picard uh, and even Strange New Worlds even more so. And so I thought this was a really cool way to modernize a, an original series story even in a subtle way by sort of continuing off of that one. But even uh, further, uh, the thing that I loved this novel the most for, without spoiling too much, is that the some of our characters go down to a planet on an away mission to capture the scientist, and things also on the ground get wacky in some of the best Star Trek the original series way. I don't want to spoil too much, but it, it has that like 60s camp concept to it. Sometimes even Star Trek The Next Generation got into this sort of campy idea stuff too. Uh, but it's like, it just, it very much fits within the original series, but also is, is very cool and, and a fun concept uh, as well um, that I, I really deeply uh, enjoyed this book for. Um, my only critique really with, uh, with this book is kind of twofold. One, some of the humor falls a little bit flat for me. There are times within the book uh, where David Mack uh, tries to add in a little bit of humor and it, it, it doesn't really work for me. I find I find a little bit, some of it cringy and I'm being like, oh, um, I, I, I didn't find that funny at all. He's like, he sort of relies on some like stock jokes. Um, like, uh, I'm not as think as you drunk I am is literally a thing that uh, like one of the characters says. I think a Klingon says that too, which is even weirder considering that sort of doesn't really fit within like Klingon's, you know, worldview. Like are there Klingon cops that are getting, stopping them, pulling them over for a DUI or whatever? Cause that's what that joke sort of comes from. Um, so it was just, it was just a, it, the humor didn't really work for me. And then sometimes the on the ground action, the space action is great, but the on the ground action uh, felt a little bit too heightened. Like characters fight hundreds of these uh, native people um, on the ground, which also could maybe be mildly problematic depending on how you look at it, though I think the story handles it decently well. Um, but the but the action itself is like they're fighting hundreds of these people and they're just a small away team and able to fend them off and it kind of like loses the weight in sort of like the grandiosity of it all. I would have much rather like a smaller scale things. It's a, it's a problem that I think a, a lot of like Star Trek uh, has gotten into like with the Picard where it's like a thousand ships uh, coming to attack when it's like it would have been better if you had like five. It would have made more sense. It would have uh, actually been tenser. Um, and so it's just a problem with some of the on the ground action in this book um, for me. But beyond that, this was a lot of fun. It was a great uh, sort of Klingon Cold War novel. Uh, and I really recommend it if you're a fan of the original series, if you're a fan of Star Trek Vanguard, if you like uh, good like um, Star Trek novels. Uh, I think it was a really solid uh, book and I'm excited for you all to read it. But let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. I hope you're all taking care of yourselves. And uh, if you celebrate the holidays, happy holidays. Uh, and if you celebrate the new year, happy new year. Um, take care of yourselves. And I hope you all, my friends, live long and prosper.